everyone, thank you for being here. So today we're gonna be making this portrait of this girl in watercolors. And I will be giving you some tips on how to use uh, watercolors and the colors, how they get blend together. This is the reference image you can see in the right side. First of all, we have to analyze how we are gonna layer the tones for the skin so looking at the reference image the lighter tones of the skin i am gonna use the yellow with a lot of water to put it in the light areas when i'm applying it it looks like a lot of pigment but then when watercolors dry they tend to lighten even though you have to be really careful with watercolors not to go too dark because it's easier to make things darker but not to make things lighter After that, I go to the next color, that is some of that yellow with a little bit of orange to make it a little bit darker for some shadows. Watercolors is all about building darkness and shadows little by little and generating a structure with different spots. So really when you see a watercolor it's more like everything is just spots blending together. There's not like lines. Then I'm going with the same mixture of yellow and orange, but then I will add blue. It's all about observation and looking how the shadows mix and blend. When you are trying to copy an image, don't see the lines or the shapes. Look at the spots of color, of shadows. Look at everything as a spot. Like try to even like close your eyes a little bit, like flinch your eyes and look at it that way look at it with different perspectives and also if you want it to blend a little bit you can just grab a clean brush with water and blend over the colors when they are already dry remember you cannot see that as properly in this video because of course every time I wait for drying I cut that because it's a lot of time that is nothing happening uh, but you have to wait between layer and layer to dry properly and then you can add another layer if not you're gonna make a mess a huge mess that is gonna bleed everywhere for example for the hair I start putting this super light super electric red and the reason for that, even that the hair actually is going to look more like brown, it's because the highlights in the hair are red, like are these tone. There are minimum highlights, but what I'm going to go with this point is you first need to think of your lighter tones and try to keep those tones 
as most as possible because once you make them darker there's no going back And for example, a face already dried. So I start putting a little bit of more shadows. With more blue. But also like not even like putting more blue, just putting layers and layers. You're making the painting less translucent, less transparent. So you can see less the white under that is the page and it's becoming more pigmented and darker go here with a super dark mixture for the neck and the back of the neck but also then I'll take the same mixture with more water and it's a lot lighter you can see afraid of contrast what makes a nice drawing portrait illustration is really contrast or if you don't do that all your drawings are gonna be flat and without light By the way, thank you so much for watching this video and if you want uh, me to draw anything in particular just let me know in the comments and I will do it. Also if you have any recommendations of new video ideas please leave it in the comments. I will have a look and let's keep on painting. So I start to put the shadows also in the clothing, little by little blending and building. And you see I darken a lot the hair, but I try to make like, not, you don't have to do every hair, but you have to really dip in and like build the structure of the hair with the shadows and lights of every like couple on um, bunches of hair to give it more volume about hair when we do the eyebrows for example we need a base color that is more like closer to the skin tone because when you see eyebrows you can see a little bit of the skin under them now with the lips it's really important if you want that shine and highlights in the lips to really focus in keeping those highlights 
that give volume and shiny and health to those lips. And now I start with more detail, for example, in the eyes. With uh, the detail, you want to do it with less water and use the watercolors more like a paint that could be like acrylic or like oil in some sense because that way you will have a stronger edges that will really give you like detail quality if not everything is going to be blended with each other making a mess Remember to be patient when you're painting. Like it has to look a lot worse before it looks good. Sometimes you can see the progress and process of a painting and it looks like crazy, like it's totally going nowhere. But suddenly you put more layers, have patience, you work it and work and work it and you get somewhere and enjoy while you're painting. That's the most important. Be, pa be patient and enjoy what you're doing. <laughs> Sorry if you can hear all the cars. I'm right now actually at my parents' house in Mexico. So it's like in a super busy street and it's crazy. Here, for example, without having like having fear of anything, I'm going there and doing the really deep shadow of the eyebrow going through the nose and the eye socket to really pop up what is happening there. And I start grading and I start sorry drawing hair my hair little by little so we have the texture of hair. Here, as you see, I'm going with little shadows with a smaller brush, little by little, but also then I change to a bigger brush for the bigger uh, shadows. So. Another tip, if you go and put a lot of darkness, for example, in the eyes and you need a highlight, what you can do, but I didn't do hair because I respected the highlights, but if you by mistake eh, lose your highlights, for example, in the eyes and they have to be really white, you can buy some white wash and paint them with that again over it when, when the watercolor is already dry. And bring all the detail for the eyes, thinking how it make them glossy and shiny like they're wet, at the same time uh, deep, like looking at how the eyelid covers and gives some shadows to the eyeball. 
and also doing all the eyelashes. darken the hairs in the eyebrows painting is a work that you don't just focus in an area you have to go around multiple times and doing progress in each part until you're satisfied with all of it together Then with a tiny brush, I also go with the black sometimes and put just the minimum details. Like it could be eyelashes, could be like the really, really dark parts of the middle of the mouth. deepening all the shadows more and more till we're satisfied but it's everything is all about going little by little not like just from the beginning putting like a black uh, shadow that then you don't know what to do about it for example now I can actually go with like almost black color and put like the super super dark shadows
and then we even darken more and more the clothes to give more volume after we have the hair and then we have it beautiful portrait in watercolors subscribe if you like it and ring the notification button to see my video next week thank you so much for being here and here we have the last image that I uploaded to Instagram. Thank you so much again, and bye!